Welcome back to 3D Animation. Um, we are going to focus today, let me just reset my window here back to classic, on how to animate uh, particle effects, specifically end particles. Now I'm not going to teach you everything about end particles in this tutorial because if you took my 3D modeling course or you've been working in Maya for a while, you know how particles already work. End particles are the one you're going to want to work with, not the old legacy ones, so that's what I'm going to focus with because they work the best with the Arnold Renderer. So um, right off the bat, if we want to reach our end particles, it's best to change your menu set here. I'm going to go down to effects and here's we have our end particles. So I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm just going to go ahead and, and start off with a classic emitter, create an emitter. And you're going to see I have my emitter, my end particle and my nucleus. So I'm going to go ahead and move my emitter up so that it's up in the air a little bit. If I play, you'll see there's that classic emitter, just a little like stream of particles coming down, right? Well, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and add a plane. We'll give it something to collide with, like a little tabletop. And then while that plane is selected, I'm going to go to end cloth and turn it into a passive collider. So at least now when we back up, we've got it hitting something and rolling out, right? Um, and you know, from here, if I actually click on my end particle again, and I get my end particle shape, I can come into here and I can, uh, they're going to collide. They're definitely colliding with the object that they're colliding with right now, but I'm also going to add self collision. So they bounce into each other. And then under shading here, I'm going to open up this panel and I'm going to change it to spheres instead of points, just so we can see these a little bit better. There we go, and now we're starting to see them. You see them colliding with the table with each other, and they're actually like pushing each other off. We don't have enough room here, so I'm gonna increase my timeline to say like 500. And let's see how that goes from there. Awesome, now we're starting to get somewhere, right? They're pushing off the table. We're getting kind of a dynamic situation here. Not too bad. Now, obviously with end particles, it's hard to just scrub back and forth. You can scrub forward, but every time you go back, it kind of screws up the calculations. Um, but there is a new feature in Maya. It has some bugs you got to watch out for. But if you come down here, there's this cached playback. And if you right click on it and you go to uh, cache playback preferences, you can turn on cache playback and you can turn on cache dynamics. And watch what this does. You get this little like red bar here at the bottom of your timeline. And now, when I play, what's cool is, you know, I can get this running all the way through, but then I can kind of scrub back and forth and get exactly where I want when I go to animate, exactly where I want, say I want some camera movement to happen in a particular place. I want to fine tune like where I'm seeing these particles from or other objects that are interacting with them. So I can just scrub back and forth and do this a little bit. I have noticed it doesn't, it has some issues with using an instanced particle. For some reason they don't show up. So you just have to right click on this and turn that off again. So you would just right click, go to cache playback preferences and turn off the cached and the cache system there and save and then you're back in business again. But I wanted to show you that because it can be really helpful once you go to like animate this particularly with a camera and all of that fun stuff. So I'm going to click on my end particle here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a new material. So I'm going to go ahead and add a standard surface and I'm going to change this color to blue. Now we're not going to see it in here. Um, unfortunately, even with like hardware texturing turned on, I, you know, it just doesn't show up um, even though the textured line is on there. But I'm going to go ahead and go to my Arnold tab here and I'm going to add a sky dome just so we have some light. And just so you can see what this looks like, I'll render it. So you can see that blue is there. It just wasn't showing up in my renderer on the particle, on the end particle. Um, don't know why that is. And it is fully rendered. If I go to my desktop, I've been noticing I have some, some kind of rendering glitch going on on this particular system, why that's still blue. But if I go to temporary, there it is. There's my nice render, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these so I don't have any confusion moving forward as we render. And what's great is you can do all sorts of things in here. You know, like obviously when I click on my end particle and I click on the end particle shape, I just showed you spheres, but you know, there's all sorts of stuff in here. There's points, there's, and you know, here's what the points look like if I render them with that color. You know, tiny, teeny, tiny little points. You can change the size of those. I believe that's under end particle. 
I always forget where the scale is. Under emitter, you can determine the rate at which they're coming out and the speed at which they're coming out, which is obviously a big part of it. I think under n particle, somewhere in here, there's an ability to change the size of them. Maybe it's in here, n particle shading. There we go, point size. So those make them a little bit bigger. Um, I feel like there's another area. I'm missing it right now. There's some properties in here that will allow you to play with that. The count, the lifespan of the particles, whether they live forever or, or have like a constant that they start to die off at. Oh, there it is, particle size. So uh, instead of, you definitely don't want to do it down where I did it the first time. Let me bring that back down, uh, point size back down to like two. But up here under particle size, I could increase these. Actually, I guess that's not, maybe, maybe it is with the points. That is where you have to do them. Because if I do it like, oh, no, no, that did increase it in the render. So it just wasn't showing up in the viewport. But as I increase the radius here, they should show up a little heavier. And that's just with those those little point sizes there. Let me bring that up to like eight. Let's see if that's really what's doing it. Yep. So that is the point size is down here under shading. So if I bring that back down again, it's going to take it down to like a four. So that's just point sizes. But there's a whole bunch in here. You know, there's points, there's blobby surfaces, which are kind of fun. I, I have linked another tutorial that goes over blobby surfaces you can do on your own. Um, there's streaks, although Arnold doesn't seem to like the streaks as much, but you can make that work in like the hardware texture, I believe. Yeah, I don't think these will actually show up in Arnold. Uh, I guess they kind of did. Anyway, you can play around with those, or obviously we can also go and create an object so I could create a, a little torus here. You don't want to have a super complex object for this because they can really um, you know, tax your render time quite a bit. But if I hold that down and I choose and hold command and choose my N particle, I can come up here and I can do a instancer. And then you can see that switches them all over to instances as well. Whoa, those are flying all over the place. Not sure what just happened there. <laughs> Let's back that up. I think I did something kind of crazy. I must have increased the speed or... Huh. I'm going to undo all that real quick. Usually those just pile up the way you saw. Let's try that again. Yeah, I must have messed something up on the original when I was playing with the speed there. I think I increased it too much. Let's just do that again. <laughs> So let's create an N particle instead of trying to find where I did that wrong. And uh, let's hold down, let's get that plane again and turn that into a passive collider. And let's get that emitter and bring it up. There we go. Sorry, I was just looking for the end particle there. End particle shape, there we are. And so let's just make a torus again here. Scale it down a little bit. We'll put it off to the side. Hold down command, oh, not the emitter, but the end particle. And go to end particle and instancer. There we go. I think I had just turned the speed way up on that. And you can always hide the original torus, and then the other guys will still remain. So lots of possibilities there of what you're doing, what you're playing with, um, how you're making these end particles work together and enabled together. And uh, you know, the great thing is you can animate all of this as well. So if I wanna come in here at any point and uh, grab my end particle here, and I was just looking for my collisions. There we go. We get them to self collide again. Perfect. Get them to start falling off the table. And I want to go ahead and on that original torus, I'm going to add existing material again. I'm going to add that AI standard surface. There we go. At least we can see some color in it. Let me save this real quick.
So now we can start to animate any any of these attributes however we want, right? So if I come back in and I go say to the emitter here, you know, there's a lot uh, that we can play around with, and uh, we can play around with everything from collision to to, to the speed at which these things are, are coming down. So I'm going to go to the emitter here and play with just the particle rate. So right now I have 100 particles per second. Maybe I want to dial that way down to like 10 particles per second. If I back that up, we'll see what that looks like. Right, so maybe it starts out kind of slow like that. They're banging into each other. It's all good. They're colliding and pushing each other. Uh, so right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and take my cursor to zero here. And I'm going to right click on rate and set a key. And then maybe I come out to 100 here. And instead of 10, I set this to 50. Right click, set a key. And then we're going to see a ramp up as it gets up to 50, where it starts to increase more and more and more. And then maybe I bring it back down again. So if I come out to roughly the 200 mark, and then I could take this back down to like, five and right click and set a key if i bring this up in my animation tab or display i can see it down here in the graph editor remember each time with the animation unless we put that playback in or the playback cache we're going to have to back up to kind of see it you can't just scrub back and forth That is interesting. I do have collisions set on these, this particular end particle. They're not colliding how I would expect them to, but it might be just something with the instancer. They are pushing each other out, but it's, it's interesting. It might be just because at the end I have it slowed down to just five. So they were pushing each other off, and then it slows down again and slows the rate way down. So it's almost like a faucet being turned on and off, or whatever's creating these gets turned on and off. And there we go. So lots to hear you can play with. You can change anything though. You know, it doesn't just have to be, um, you could increase the bounce of how these things bounce when they hit the ground. So maybe when they first start out, they have very little bounce. So I could right click and hit um, set key. And then as we get out to say 100, I could increase that bounce quite a bit. Let's take this up to like 0.5 and right click and set key. They're starting to bounce a little bit there, but you know, we'd have to increase things as we go and kind of figure out the exact spot that we want it at. So let's see, maybe I take that up to 10 instead and right click and set key. Whoa, then they go crazy, right? They're bouncing all over the place. So that might have been a little too high of a setting and, you know, going to have to fine tune it as we go. But any of these parameters, that's the amazing part of this is that any of these parameters, so I'll take that back down to like maybe 1.5. Eh, still a little too high. They're still bouncing all over the place, but you get the point. Any of these different parameters, collision strength, bounce, friction, stickiness, the, the rate at which the particles are coming out, uh, just about any of it can be animated. So, and then when you're done, you know, we've got it all animated out. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of undo at least the, these particular keyframes. So if I go to my end particle here and open this guy up, should be able to see my bounce. Yeah, that's pretty immediate to have it go from that to that. So I think that was part of it. It just kind of like jumped up way too fast. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Big particle explosion. So it starts to bounce and bounce and bounce and then gets up to where it needs to be. And including a couple of other things. So if I want to now, I can go to my render settings. Let's change this to a, just for now, we'll just do JPEG for file size. We're going to go ahead and set, instead of a single frame, give this a number extension on it. And we're going to go up to frame 100. And we're going to render this out at 1080p. Oh, did I miss it? No. HD 1080. 
That looks pretty good. We've got the Arnold render. We're going to save one more time. And then I'm going to pull up the render here and go ahead and render sequence. And after the first one, oh, I didn't hide the original particle. I should have hid the original instance. These should start to come in pretty quickly. There it goes. There's the first particle. I believe my rate is still kind of low at the beginning and then starts to ramp up. And very quickly, we'll have an image sequence. There's a second particle it looks like overlapping on it. There they go. They're starting to separate a little bit more. Just that easy to get a render sequence going. There's three particles now. If I go to my desktop while this is rendering, I have this all rendering images to my desktop. Here they are so far. Remember to hide that original particle unless you want it to show up in the stream though, okay? There you go. You can see it growing out of the emitter and dropping out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape on this. So there's your basics on getting particles uh, in part of an animation and some of the parameters you can start to control. Uh, let me know if you have any questions as usual. And as always, thanks for tuning in.